um, we're just going to take this as a, um, a potential breeding mare, and we would, we're going to do what we would call a breeding status evaluation, just like we do in a bull. Um, we do um, sperm evaluation just to make sure that he is fertile and able to breed cows. We do that for female animals too, um, more so in the, the horse than we do in the cow. Um, as we talked about, there are so many reasons that the horse is unable to, to carry a baby to term uh, creates um, a question about is she actually going to be a fertile mare. So there are several things that we could do for a reproductive exam on a mare. Um, I gave her a little bit of sedation. Normally, I wouldn't do that. Um, most mares tolerate uh, being palpated and ultrasounded extremely well. Um, but we don't have any stocks, and I don't know this horse, I've never worked on her before. I want you all to be able to look at the, the confirmation of the vulva um, pretty well, so, and I don't want you to get kicked. Uh, and I'm sure that none of you want to get kicked. Um, so anyway, I gave her a little sedation. The point is, is that normally I wouldn't do that. Uh, it tends to relax uh, the muscles of um, the, the vaginal area, and so it's not a true representation of what it would want like if that musculature is relaxed and kind of uh, clouds our judgment a little bit, I guess is what I'm trying to say. But since we're trying to be safe and we want to ultrasound her uh, without any incident, uh, we went ahead and uh, examined her. So what we would do first uh, is we would just make an attempt to evaluate this mare confirmationally. Can you turn her sideways for me just a little bit? Thank you. So I'm not trying to make uh, horse judges out of you, but if you look at that mare, uh, the first thing that a reproductive person is going to do is just look at her capacity to carry a baby. So a veterinarian's job, a theriogenosis job that's doing the brief sinus evaluation is to look at does this mare have enough abdomen to carry a baby? You know, if she's really short, if her back is really short, there's no space, there's no capacity for her to carry a baby. This mare is well balanced. Uh, she's, she has plenty of abdominal capacity to carry a baby. Next thing that I'm going to do is I'm just going to check and make sure that she has two teats. Right? If she doesn't have um, two or if she has more than two, then that tells me that there's something wrong with the anatomy of her memory glands. I just want to make sure that there's not any scar tissue there, that she hasn't um, ripped it, cut it, lacerated it. You know, horses subscribe to uh, Murphy's Law, right? More than any other animal. They're suicidal. They look for reasons to die, and they look for reasons to get hurt. So, there are lots of reasons that that could be lacerated or messed up down there. So we just want to make sure that um, it, all, it all is good. So, um, really gently, why don't you all kind of come here behind me, not, not us to scare this mare. But let's get where you can see the confirmation of her role. Okay? Really quietly. So you can come around on this side. Okay. Everybody okay? Can you see okay? Fair? I know it's not great, but. So this mare um, has a really good vulva confirmation. If we look at, if we just draw a vertical line, we use the syringe here, uh, and I, I touch the tips of her vulva, then you may not can see, but there's only a small, small recess, small amount of space that goes back between um, the syringe and where her rectum starts there. So when we get concerned about that is when, if I drew an angle, if you want to go back to geometry, that'll give you nightmares to not want it. Um, if you drew an angle from perpendicular here, once it gets past 30 degrees, that's when we start getting concerned that the rectum is too far forward, okay? This mare, you know, 20 at the most, which is not bad. That's, we would consider that acceptable and certainly normal. Now, we, it, ideal, perfect, would be if her rectum actually touched the tip of the syringe. If it was pushed out far enough that it was actually completely perpendicular, okay? 
So this mare, uh, when you consider her normal, when she defecates, um, it is not going to fall there. There's no shelf. There's no plane for that to get stuck on. Okay? So also, if we want to just open that up and look and make sure that there's no redness, there's no irritation, that also tends to tell us that this mare doesn't have a problem keeping the lips of her vulva closed because if she were red and irritated there, that might indicate that chronic uh, inflammation and infection has been going on there, okay? So it's good pink, it's normal, it tells me everything is um, very good. Another thing that we can do is just look at the apposition. It's a fancy way of saying where those lips meet. You know, is there um, a good closing when, when it's just there normally and naturally? Here on the bottom um, is the clitoris of a horse. It has an, a pouch, a pocket, a diverticulum. It's called the clitoral fossa if you really want to get technical about it. And we look at that just to make sure that there's no infection there. Okay? Horses do carry a sexually transmitted disease called contagious equine metritis, and it's going to be infected in the clitoral fossa if they particularly have that. So that's just another thing that we look at. Okay? So this mare is good. Her confirmation is fine. We would not do anything to this mare. If the mare, if her rectum was further forward, we would do um, a, a plastic surgery called a CASLIC, C-A-S-L-I-C-K. And basically, that involves removing a thin tissue, thin band of tissue on this side, and a thin band of tissue on this side. So we're, gonna, we're talking about five millimeters, very, very thin, very, very thin strip. We're gonna use surgical scissors that uh, are just very, very tiny, very, very fine. We're going to remove that tissue on each side, and then we're going to close it. We're going to sew it together, okay? And we're going to actually close that. Once it heals, it forms a wall. And we're going to do that two-thirds of the way from the top. So her vulva opens here all the way to this point. If I put a castlex in this mare, I'm actually going to close it two-thirds of that way. Now. Can you imagine that that would create any problems? What problems am I creating if I do that? Hmm? Birth, if she wants to give a baby? Yeah, she cannot have a baby, okay? What else am I creating a problem with? Can I get my hand in there to go into the vaginal vault to inseminate her? No. So if I'm going to put a cassock in a mare, either has to be done A, after the mare is bred and confirmed pregnant, or I have to remove it when I breed her. Okay. It also has to be removed before she gives birth. She cannot give birth with a castlex in. Okay. So um, this is a procedure that is done multiple times to put the put her a castlex in, but to take it out depending on what circumstances is going on with the mare. Am I making sense? No, we can't be confused. Okay. All right. So um, this mare uh, does not have one. Um, and it doesn't look like she's ever had one, but there's really no need for her to have one. Okay? All right. Why don't you um, put her head that way and as close to that ultrasound as you can get it, and we'll see if she loves the ultrasound. So, uh, remember we talked about the, um, the ovaries in a horse are quite a bit further forward than they are in a cow. And uh, we're going to try to visualize the ovaries. We're going to try to visualize her ovaries. What I need is one of you to volunteer. There's a freeze button on the ultrasound machine. You may not actually be able to see it until we freeze it and then let you walk by it. Okay? So if somebody can hear, just hit the freeze button when I tell you to, and then all of you will be able to see it. So if you um, uh, 
Um, so when you're palpating cows and, and um, breeding cows, if you pull your hand back and you get a little blood on it, what do your professors do? Yeah. That's it, right? Nobody freaks out. Nobody <coughs> if you get blood on your sleeve, you're palpating a horse. It's a big deal. It's not a good thing. Okay, so uh, horses do not tolerate any extra uh, damage or irritation to uh, the rectal lining as much as a cow. So if we damage that, it's something to be concerned about. Horses squeeze <laughs> a lot more than cows. <laughs>
Okay. Okay. All right. If you all want to slowly come up here, just real quietly. Um, so this is her ride on the I didn't get to find her lamp, but I'll go back in the field just a second. But um, this is about a tennis ball size. She has two or three follicles. Here's a little tiny one that we would call a primary follicle. This is a secondary follicle, and this is what we call an intermediate follicle or almost a tertiary follicle. Um, it's, she's not in heat. She's not far enough along. If we wanted to um, discern, determine how quickly she would be in heat, um, we can measure this follicle. So it says this follicle is about 25 millimeters. And we know that a mare is actually going to be uh, in estrus uh, with a follicle that's about 35 to, to 40. Okay? Uh, and may ovulate anything over 40. So we know that this mare is about 25, and we know it's probably going to go to grow, excuse me, grow two to three millimeters a day. So we can estimate that this mare is probably not going to be in standing estrus for at least another two days, possibly even three. Okay? So that's what a normal ovary would look like. Let's see if we can find the other one. And maybe, maybe we will see what that looks like. And maybe we'll see what that looks like. No, yeah. Whoa. She's taller than three of us. I like for you to be able to see um, CL structure. Remember that you cannot feel the, um, the CL in a horse. I can feel those follicles, but the CL is always going to be at that ovulation fossil, so you can't feel that. Oh, girl. Yeah. structures, those white, or excuse me, those dark spots that are black, black spots that are black, you know what I mean. <laughs> um, they're fluid field structures and those are follicles. But there's not a CL over here on this ovary either. So that means she's probably going to cycle, like we said. There's another small follicle here, about a 25, that um, will be growing at the same rate. So her uterus is not going to be that remarkable because she's not in heat. Or C, 
uh, there could be some uh, fibrosis or scarring uh, in her uterus. Any of those things are bad for fertility, okay? So, having done that, having looked at her uterus there and saw that there's something wrong, then we would automatically decide to do a uterine biopsy. And that involves going in vaginally, just like you were going to breathe the mare. We would clean her up, do a, a sterile prep, and then we would take a long tube, uh, a pipette, and we would insert a, a biopsy needle through that and grab a little tiny piece of that tissue to try to decide what that is, what that fluid is. Is it a cyst? Um, is it just inflammation? Is it scarring? What is causing that? And then we would try to decide, is this mare a potential candidate to breed or not, based on what that biopsy says. So if somebody were going to go pay $50,000 for this mare, <laughs> as a potential show horse and then a future brood mare, with that structure in her uterus, a $25, $30 biopsy would be in order. I don't want to bring that mare home as a potential brood mare for my herd, not knowing if this is going to prevent her from being a successful reproductive candidate. So doing the breeding science evaluation has told us, hey, there's something kind of weird and funky. How old is this mare? I'm not sure, but up there. Oh, she's, okay. So 18. probably that is just an old age change that typically happens in mares that have been open for many, many years. We don't think that this mare's had a baby, right? So she's probably got some scarring in that uterus is just, the fact that she's an old lady, okay? <laughs> so this candidate, if you wanted, let's just say that this mare was a world champion horse and she'd been on the show ring all of her life, okay? And now you've decided that Granny's old and she's going to retire and you want her to have a baby. Well, it doesn't look like that that's a very good candidate for that. So that this mare would either A, need to be an embryo donor mare, or you would have to work about trying to get that fixed. It may not be fixable. It may just be enough scar tissue that she can't maintain a pregnancy at all. But either way, after having done the, the breeding science evaluation, we know I've got to decide is this mare worth investing a lot of money in as a breed mare or not. All you, all you do, do is the ultrasound and go from there. Okay, I think that's uh, pretty much all we would do with her. Um, one more thing that we might potentially do is get a little tiny fluid sample from her uterus so we could flush a little bit of fluid in there and then flush that fluid out to check and see if there's an infection growing there. This may potentially be um, an infection, but we don't know, so we would have to get the fluid and do that at the same time with this box. We'd probably do that um, after the biopsy because the box is a serial. Okay, any questions? Inside out, right? So remember, the, the mare's ovary is turned inside out. So the manure is on the outside, and the follicles uh, are on the cortex, which is on the inside. But they get large enough in the mare that you can still feel the bump. You can still the, feel it protruding from the ovulus or fossa? No, just from the ovary itself. It gets a little big enough that you can actually feel the bump of the follicle protruding through. Um, it pushes up on um, the, the medulla enough that you can feel it. But the fossa is kind of curled around at the bottom, and so you can't get your hand to the fossa. The ovulation fossa. So are you feeling that you're palpating the follicle on the opposite side of the of the fossa? Yes, it okay. moves around to the fossa. Yes, the follicle moves there to that. Okay, oh, the follicle actually moves once at the time of ovulation. Okay, it moves around and then okay. It I'm moves to that spot. You can only ovulate from that one specific spot, so it has to move there. Because if they were all there at that one spot, right? I mean, yeah. you would only have a follicle at one spot on the specific ovary. And we know that that's not true, that there are follicles all over the ovary. Right. right. So they just, um, a pre-ovulatory follicle just migrates to that ovulation. It does. Prior to that 
Yes. yes. If you, if we had been lucky enough to get a follicle that was just about to ovulate, they um, they change their shape as they're about to ovulate because they've moved. So instead of becoming completely round like those follicles were, um, they have what we call a little uh, the ostium, which is like a you see a lemon um, and the little, the little dip on the end of a, a lemon um, where it was attached to the tree. That's what um, the ovulating follicle looks like. So you're all going to become equine reproductive physiologists now, right? Make a lot of money. Anything else that I left out that you want me to cover? What was this barn when you were a student? Because it was a <laughs> junk pile when we were here and then it got cleaned out. And it was the dairy, actually. The still was the dairy. Was when the dairy herd was still here. I don't know if the cows is here many, many, many times. <laughs> we get over this, right? Well, I have a question. I stopped with dogs and said, if they had any uh, secret tips to help you pass the service. Pass the what? Pass the service. The garage door service. Some of them are waiting for a silver bullet. The magic tip makes it easier. I don't know because I haven't been dealing with your palpating, but I think the biggest thing is you get nervous. And if you just use your landmarks, your anatomy landmarks, and you're calm, and you're not about to freak out, and you're not thinking you're going to tear something up, even if you do puncture the surface of a couch, you're not going to die. So don't worry about that. <laughs> if you puncture the surface of a horse, it's a big deal, but not in a cow. So just be calm. Um, Really slow, really calm. I don't really have a silver bullet either. You'll get it. I remember when I got it, um, I think I ate like 10 pieces of pizza that night or something. <laughs> so, how many of you want to go to bed today?